when you hear about Malawi, the warm heart of Africa. Tourism, yes. My name is Alina Femlamba. In this edition of NPC Exclusive, I'm joined by the Minister of Tourism, Vera Edson Kamtogole. Welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me. You've been in the ministry for two years, two years or so. 18 months. Indeed. And you've done pretty well within these months. Notably, you've introduced uh, the very first Malawi Tourism Expo. What was the exact idea behind this? So I wouldn't say that it was me that introduced the, the, the Expo. The Expo was there, so the Malawi International Tourism Expo had been there for, for a long time, uh, but um, we had suspended it because of the COVID-19. So you are aware that we couldn't gather, and that's why we had suspended it. So the first ever uh, Malawi International Tourism Expo to have happened after the COVID-19 pandemic was in 2023. And it was, uh, I think, two months after I had been appointed to this ministry. So that's why it was like, uh, I'm the one that introduced it, but it was a, a program that was running every single year, I think from 2014, somewhere there. But we had suspended it uh, because of the COVID-19 pandemic. And then now we're introducing it. That is why in 2023, the theme of that event was Ibatse Moto, we are back, mm -hmm. to show the country and also to the world that we are now back with the Tourism International Expo. And then I'm looking at the visibility uh, that the country has seen. Mm -hmm. You said it started in 2014, mm -hmm. but then its popularity uh, came about in 2023. What changes we made? I think for me, normally, I think personally, I have a problem with um, uh, government programs just happening and then appealing to the people that are involved within the sector. So if you have a, an agriculture expo or symposium, it will be people that are in that space. Or if it's a tech thing, it would be Macra and the people that are in the tech space. Uh, people would not be involved. I think that was the first thing that I had noted to say, when you're talking about Malawi International Tourism Expo, when you're talking about Malawi, you're talking about all of us, 20 million of us. And so we needed to find a way of how uh, to bring everybody on board, creating a critical mass of people that are conscious of their own country, but also now raising those voices to amplify to the world about what Malawi has to offer as far as tourism is concerned. For us to be able to do that, it's not going to be the minister alone or the, min or the PRO alone or the Department of Marketing alone. It had to be everyone. So what we did in that year was to involve everyone. So we involved our celebrities. We have celebrities in this country. So you have Gwamba, Kelly Kay, uh, you have um, um, uh, all these artists, you know, that we had appealed to them. Why? Because these are people that would have, that would have millions of viewers on their pages. And so if you invite them, it means you are inviting two million people. People, two million people are going to see uh, that message because these people have a fan base. And also, I think for me, uh, you are aware that the Malawi 2063 is, is youth centric. So these uh, artists, they are also appealing to young people as well. So we knew that if we do that, everyone is going to, to be involved. I think, I think that was the only difference that was there. So we made it popular, but I think the, the, the long and short of it was we wanted everyone in this country engage in the Malawi International Tourism Expo. The second thing is that we wanted to shock us to the country in terms of what the International Tourism Expo actually does, not only as part of its contribution to the socioeconomic development of the country, but also in terms of the supply chain, who is involved. So for example, I will, take, I will tell you, we host like 60 uh, hosted buyers from across the world coming into this country. Those people come here, they, they stay in, 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 in hotels, they eat food, they buy presents for their people and whatever. They, they, are, they are eating food, they are buying airtime, they want um, internet and all of that. So from just one person, about 100 people are being affected because one person came to Malawi. So we wanted also to ensure that we are promoting and showcasing to the, to the country this, the, the supply chain that tourism impacts within the economy. And for us to do that, we needed everyone involved. So let's look at uh, the stakeholders you've been engaging, celebrities among others. How did they respond to your call? No, I think everyone uh, really responded uh, to our call. So we would say, we would put in flyers and say we are inviting you and then personalize it to say we are inviting you, Guamba or Kelly Kay or any other artist uh, for that matter to this Malawi International Tourism Expo. Also, it was not just us using their platforms. It was also about them also coming to the expo to also expose themselves as far as what they do. You know, you are, you are aware that corporates, they take, they use artists, for example, also to endorse uh, or, or to promote their products as well. So it was also part of also promoting their uh, their own uh, uh, agendas and and what they do their trade uh, as it were but also I think for me for you to have an, a, a successful expo it's not easy you're talking about 
bringing together in, the, in 2023 we had about 120 uh, exhibitors uh in, uh in in 2024 we doubled that we almost doubled that uh, i think we got to 200 280 somewhere there so it's very huge for us to get to that level where you are seeing that expo the way it is uh, at the bingo international conference center it's not easy it takes a lot of tenacity on the part of the ministry but also on the part of our partners and stakeholders so we, you know that we work with um tourism operators uh there's hosted buyers everyone the, the corporate uh, companies and we know that the, the government does give us a budget to enable us to to um to run uh, these campaigns especially when bringing in the hosted buyers because we have to buy the tickets in advance you are aware that when you're buying tickets much much later then they become expensive but also um we needed sponsors and uh last year i mean being the first time we are doing it after the COVID 19 pandemic it was extremely difficult for us to raise funds but we did the corporates really 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 responded very positively to our call and so for me and then everyone involved within the ministry and then all our stakeholders other other operators saying we're going to host uh, the hosted buyers in, in 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 our in our facility for free they would only just have to buy food or they will, will give them free food but you have to pay for accommodation and all of that but just hand holding us to ensure that we are we are we are um uh, delivering a successful uh, malawi international tourism expo just to let you know that when you're talking about these hosted buyers these are people that are wholesalers, they are retailers that package uh, tourism uh, packages and sell them. And so you cannot sell Malawi if you have not experienced it. So what we do, we deliberately bring them into the country and then we expose them to the country. Because you cannot talk about Malawi if you have not been there, if you have not sampled our food, if you have not sampled our culture. So we bring you. So for example, if the media is running from 25th, like this year it ran from 25th to 27th and we brought them earlier so we'd bring them maybe on the 21st so that they they, they they sample the country from the north all the way down to the south so they attend the meeting and then after that they also go out so that they experience the entire country they're able to wait to say oh okay if you go to the north this is what you're going to see if you go to the south this is what you're going to see if you're going to the eastern part of the country this is what you're going to see now for us to do all of that to to, to arrange uh, logistical uh, arrangements for about 70 or 80 people it is not small and these are coming from across the world it is not easy so we need the intervention of every stakeholder that we can get and so i want to thank everyone uh whose responsibility it was to ensure that we deliver a successful meeting and they did so and we, i want to thank them on the behalf, on behalf of the government of malawi let's talk about the post covid 19 recovery how has malawi benefited from the expo no i'm very very happy to say at the moment we have now reached even surpassed the pre covid 19 uh, numbers because I think uh, pre-COVID-19, we must have been around 900,000 somewhere there. But now we are over 1 million uh, in terms of international visitors. So we have already surpassed uh, the, uh, the, the pre-COVID-19 uh, uh, numbers. And we are targeting now 3 million visitors per year. Not just one, because 1 million is, is, is per year. But we are targeting about uh, 3 million uh, visitors per year. But I think for me, it's not about the numbers. It's about um how much they are bringing into the country into the economy because you can have five million people coming and then the returns are really not uh, very significant so i'm talking about us now attracting big spenders because they can be twenty thousand, but they would spend a lot of money within the economy those are the people that we are targeting now for us to attract those big spenders into our country that means we have to do a lot in terms of product development so us we can sell our country even in our sleep i can sell malawi anytime anywhere even in my sleep but when those people come, when the entire world now flocks into Malawi, what are they coming to see? What are they experiencing? So for us to sell the Malawi experience, for us to sell the warm-hearted tourism package, there's got to, we've got to work very, very hard to develop the products. And that's where the, the, the tour operators come in. We recently saw a travel warning issued by the British government onto its, its citizens. Yes. How did you respond to this? I thought that was um, um, uh, unfortunate because I, I do believe that Malawi is still the safest uh, tourism destination ever. Uh, apart from us being the warm heart of Africa, we're the friendliest country in the world, one of the friendliest countries in the world. And so if you look at the data from the United Nations uh, Office on uh, 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 Drugs and Crime, they will tell you that um, the, uh, the rate of kidnapping per 100,000 people in the UK is at seven. And the rate of kidnappings per 100,000 people in Malawi is zero, meaning that Malawi is, is very safe, you know. And we've seen a lot of countries that have uh, violent attacks, kidnappings everywhere and all of that. Malawi has never experienced something like that. So for me, uh, 
I know that our, our law, I don't speak for the Ministry of Homeland Security, but I am aware that the, 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 the Ministry of Homeland Security and, as well as the, the Malawi Police Service are working very hard to get to the bottom of what had happened at that time. But I think for me, the, a single incident cannot wash down everything that we've been working for, cannot erase the fact that we still remain a safest destination, but also the warm heart of Africa. What are your fears if this warning is not withdrawn? Uh, then it means it washes down everything that we have worked so hard for, but also I don't think it can, um, it can come to that uh, level where uh, it, 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 it puts our, it, dis it disenfranchises us as far as um, uh, uh, tourism uh, development is concerned in this country. My, uh, the risk there maybe would be that other people, other players would look at that, take that and, and use it as, as, as a tool for predatory marketing. Predatory marketing is when you uh, position one destination against another and say you're better off coming to this country or to this destination and not to that country because of this, you know. So that would be my, my fear. But I, 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 I trust God that he would not allow something like that to wash down every effort that we are we are having in terms of developing our tourism in this country. You are aware that uh, the President of the Republic of Malawi, His Excellency Dr. Lazarus Makathe Jaguera, has placed at the center of our structural transformation the issue of AT, the, the ATM strategy, that's agriculture, tourism, and, 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 and mining. And so you know that all our machinery, the entire government machinery, is, is, de is, is, is dedicated towards ensuring that we are developing the ATM strategy. So surely, we have the political will for us to see that tourism thrives in this country. And so we cannot allow uh, something like that to water down everything that we have been working so hard for. In case you're just tuning in, uh, this is NBC Exclusive with me, Alinafe Blamba. We're discussing tourism today with the Minister of Tourism, Vera Edson Kamtogole. We'll be back after this short break. Welcome back. This is NBC Exclusive with me, Alina Fim Lamba. We are continuing our conversation with the Minister of Tourism, Honorable Vera Edson Kamtokoli. Is it a coincidence that this warning is coming at a time whereby there have been land wrangles, not just land wrangles, but encroachment, among other things, especially at Michiru Mountain? Uh, I, I'm not, I don't think I would place the two uh, together. Uh, I think it would be wrong for me to place the two together, but I know that we have had some challenges at Michiru uh, Nature Sanctuary. So how are you working with the stakeholders, especially the British government, among other things, mm -hmm. among others, because we've also seen them taking key interest in ensuring that nature is conserved, is reserved at uh, Michiru. I think it's not only them, it's, it's, it's everyone, it's everyone's concern about Michiru Nature Sanctuary, the state of, its, of, of, of the Michiru Nature Sanctuary at the moment is appalling. Um, I, I need to say that it's, it's, it's the only uh, place within Blantyre that is sinking carbon, carbon dioxide in that city, Michiru Nature Sanctuary. That's how important it is and I don't think people uh, understand uh, the importance of Michiru Nature Sanctuary. Or, or why it is very important that we, res we preserve it, uh, we conserve that area. And so it is a concern of everyone, not just the British, but everyone, a well-meaning Malawian would be concerned of the state of the uh, Michigan Nature Sanctuary at the moment. Now, uh, our, our, we had a lot of organized crime, a lot of loggers that were going into there, the poachers and killing the animals, cutting down trees wantonly and all of that. It was heartbreaking. I've been there twice and the situation was really uh, heartbreaking. And you know what used to happen in the past would our, our rangers would arrest people and then within two three days they're out of jail and then they're coming back into the sanctuary to cut down more trees you know and um, now we're working very closely with stakeholders uh, civil, civil society organizations and our development partners and other uh, stakeholders well, especially the communities they're calling themselves concerned uh, Mijiru residents uh, that, are, that have a, a great concern towards the, 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 the nature sanctuary and uh, collaboratively we have managed to nip the, thing, the, the, the problem in the bag but I will tell you it didn't come at, at no cost at all because the last time I went there, they had burnt down the houses, newly built houses for our rangers. And you can imagine, as a woman, I met a woman that said, Am I, our house was burnt while I was there with the kids. It broke my heart and I cried. Because I could imagine myself with my little children 
and then people coming in with pangas and then burning our house while I'm inside with the children. It's, I mean, come on. So these are people that have committed their lives to protecting uh, the nature sanctuary and now uh, their lives are at stake, their families are at stake, you know. Is, and so, yeah. From what you've said, yeah. is Michiru Sanctuary a war zone? No, not exactly a war zone. Malawi is a safe place. Like I said, it's not a war zone, but we had a problem. We had a challenge there. And so we had to bring in soldiers. We brought in Malawi Police Service there. We brought in Malawi Defense Force uh, um, uh, Services there. Uh, officials there to, to help us uh, to, pro to provide security. But that was only a temporary measure. Honorable Minister, um, recently the removal of visa requirements for citizens from uh, 79 countries is quite a significant policy change. Yes. You, being the Minister of Tourism, can you just tell us what was the rationale behind this decision? So I think we, one thing you didn't ask me was uh, what, what is our area of focus as a ministry? So we have two key functions as a Minister of Tourism. So number one, we, have just, we do destination marketing. Number two, we do product development. So destination marketing is everything that you see us do promoting Malawi as a destination, the warm heart of Africa, so that people should know about Malawi and they should come to Malawi to do their holidays, to do their meetings and all of that. That's what destination marketing is all about. Product development now is about now what are they coming to see? Oh, come to Malawi, we have Lake Malawi that has over 1,000 species of fish, the largest number of species fishes in the world, in any other water body in the world. That's product development. We come here to Malawi where we have Cape Maclear, a place that offers you the safest place to do snorkeling in the world i don't know if people know about that the safest place to do snorkeling in any water body in the world is found at, at cape, Ma cape maclear in mangoji in lake malawi we have that you know so that's a product development so when people you come here you do snorkeling you come here you do bird watching you come here you do all of these things that we do now um but that is good and then the issue was coming in to say now how do we get to malawi how do we get there right so we have a challenge with with air connectivity where it becomes a little bit difficult for people to come to access this beautiful destination of ours the warm heart of africa and also it was becoming a little bit expensive because of the connections that people have so for, for example from one destination somebody will have to get maybe onto three planes for example so it means getting from their country to another country to another destination, another destination before they come into malawi now connecting like that becomes a little bit expensive that ticket becomes expensive so we needed to find means and ways of saying we are in this situation at the moment now for somebody that has come to Malawi, they have, they have wanted to come to our country. It means we have convinced them to say, you need to come here. So the president said, let's make it a little bit easier for them to come to the country. Because at the time, people needed to apply for their visas online. And then they would find the system down. It would take them three weeks for them to apply. And then they would just say, ah, Tanzania, it's just easy. I'll just go online. Even on my phone, I'm, I get the visa. And then the ticket to Tanzania is even cheaper than Malawi. So I'll just go to Tanzania. So it was disenfranchising us. So the president, in his wisdom, he said, I am going to remove the visas from our key source market, so 79 countries. And by the way, that was an additional 79 countries over and above what was already there because we already had some countries that were coming into our country visa free. You've mentioned about concessions. How are we managing as a country? I think we have um, uh, we are working in partnership with uh, African Parks, but we have two partnerships that I would want I uh, would want to highlight uh, for this interview. One with the the one that we have with African Parks, but also the one that we have with pa Peace Parks Foundation. So the one with African Parks is very interesting because I think next year, twenty twenty five, we're going to hit uh, twenty five years of working together, and uh, it 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 required the belief of one man by the name of Mr. Sef, who God bless his soul, he believed. And he's the one that told the government of Malawi, recommended to the government of Malawi to say, let's go into partnership with this institution. And it is because of that, that's why African Parks is in other African countries. They're now in Zambia, Rwanda, and several other countries as well. But they started here in Malawi. It, it, it had to take one Malawi and believing that this could work. And so because of that partnership that we've been, we've having, we've been having with uh, African Parks, we have seen an increase in our, uh, the number of our wildlife. 
uh, even the health, uh, the management of the same. Like in Majete, it's very fascinating. I should take you there one of these days. You, you are able to track the, the animals uh, by using an app. Uh, you know, they have a system in place. And um, I, I remember a couple of months ago, uh, the PS sent to me a, a, a document for my approval to, um, to provide um, uh, contraceptives to lions and I was like is this even a thing you we are providing contraceptives to lions I thought maybe we are going against nature or something like this but it's 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 because now our number number of lions has gone very very high uh, in some of these uh, protected areas and but it's, we are able to know that because we are able to track even the number of animals and we never used to do that and so we have had now we are touting to say we have the big five in Malawi it's because of the partnership that we have had uh, with African parks we're able now to tout about the community engagement the community empowerment and all of that because of the partnership that we have had with African Park. So it has been working very, very closely, um, very, very successfully. And now it comes to an end in 2025. And I know that they've already put up an application for a renewal of that concession. But I can tell you that that concession has been working very good. Can it be improved? Absolutely, yes. Nothing would be uh, foolproof. But um, we are going to, we are working now in terms of those areas that we need to improve on. We're working on them together with our counterparts from the Ministry of Justice and uh, so that we can improve on the things that have not been working well so that as we go into the future we can rectify those things together if we look at the wins and gains uh, that these concessions have given malawi how do you position yourself if we to look at other tourism destinations in the setting on a scale of one to ten i'll put ourselves at eight i think we've done really well but i think i also needed to mention the fact that i, I mentioned about the other uh, uh, partnership that we have with peace parks foundation for the new kavuaza uh, uh, um, uh, co-management what the, the arrangement there is a little bit different that one we are calling it a co-management agreement so they are bringing in their personnel we are we are bringing in, actually i think in the partnership we are we are more uh, as, as malawi and we created a, a trust that is headed by the, the chairperson is uh, 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 Justice um, uh, Twer, uh, retired. He's the one that is heading the, 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 that co-management trust. So it is working very well. So the communities are there, the chiefs are there, everyone is there, and the Peace Parks Foundation is there. So it's not a concession. So I think this is now their second year into time. So we are also going to be reviewing how that is working and ensuring that communities are the ones that are benefiting uh, from there. And also that we are eliminating the human-animal conflict that we usually uh, have within these protected areas. But I think at the moment, what is happening at the moment within the, the concession that we have with African parks, it has been working very well. You look great, by the way. Do you Thank normally you. dress like this? I, yes, sometimes I do. I, if I have functions that I have to preside over, I dress like this. Sometimes on a Friday, you know, Friday, sometimes we dress in traditional attire, I dress like this. And sometimes I also do put the, the tourism, the blue tourism attire. Is this a tourism stand, marketing-wise? Of course. So we use this material as uh, one of the marketing tools that we have uh, within, the, within the country. You know, we have to be deliberate in terms of uh, uh, promoting our culture. Just two days ago, I, I put up a post on my Facebook page about the Chilundu. I don't know if you saw it. And I was saying, is this our traditional attire? And it attracted a lot of comments. People were saying, no, it is. Some were saying, no, it is not. And all of that. Some, some were saying, no, it is in the lower Shiri and whatever. But a lot of people were saying, actually 80%, were saying Chilundu should be our traditional attire because in the past it used to be. In the Chumkoswes, people used to dress in Chilundus and all of that. But we have tasked the Malawi uh, University of Science and Technology, MAST, the Department of Culture. They're working on ensuring that we have, number one, a, 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 a national cloth and also a national design so that yeah because when you go to uganda they have a, a, a national dress if you go to the rwanda they have a national dress we don't so when you ask to say what exactly do we is is our traditional attire or our traditional cloth? because people have borrowed people are dressing like nigerians people are dressing like other countries and then calling it traditional but it's not traditional is it traditional because you went to the market to buy the material and then you have taken it to a local tailor is it traditional because you have taken it to a local tailor what exactly is traditional but also we need to have uh, a, a, a national cloth. Zimbabwe has it, Zambia has it. We need to develop our own. When should we expect it? I think we're working through that uh, because that falls under the uh, Department of Arts and Culture. Uh, it's under the uh, Ministry of Local Government, but we are working very closely with them because culture, as you may be aware, is our uh, a product that we use for tourism uh, development. So we're working very closely with them, but also with the Department of Culture in the, uh, at Mass University so that we can together uh, collaborate and, and produce these things. How do you envision Malawi's tourism industry in the next 10 years? 
in the next 10 years i think for us uh, we want to at the moment we are at 1 million plus but we want to in the next 10 years we'd want to hit about 3 to 5 million visitors per year you know and then a minimum of a billion uh, contribution towards the economy a billion dollars because i think right now we are operating below minimum uh, so we want to raise those numbers to at least a billion a minimum a billion uh, United States dollars because tourism is, 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 is an export product it's, it's a trading service and so we also want to ensure that everyone is looking at that uh, in 2019 the National Statistics Office they say that we are contributing about 6.7 percent to the, towards the GDP but for ourselves we are saying we, we could be in, uh, contributing more than that why because of the value chain for, for when, when somebody comes into Malawi, they are affecting a lot of people. So they are buying the ticket, they are, they are, they are hiring a vehicle, they are going into your room, they are buying food, they are buying curios, they are doing all of these things. A lot of people within the economy are being affected by just one person visiting us. And so for me, the 6.7% doesn't cut it. It must be more. But we're going to wait for the, for the recent uh, contribution. But so they, the, the people that get the data, they don't take into consideration the contribution within the value chain. Uh, of tourism and we would want to do that so for the next 10 years we would want a minimum of three to five million visitors per year Honorable Minister, it was nice having you thank you so edition. much for having me okay. i appreciate it yeah and that's what we had for you in this edition of mpc exclusive my guest today was the minister of tourism honorable vera edson Kamtokole. my name is alina femlamba until next time stay inspired <laughs>